Hey, welcome everybody. Um, I quickly threw a webinar together or a quick video together with regards to the statement that was made by Opta. So we can just go through it step by step. And um, so you can get a clear indication as to, you know, what the, the, the meaning or the objective behind the, the, the statement was. And let's get into the in-depth the in depth side of the, the, the statement. Um, let's take note that we are going to, we're just trying to get this information out as quick as possible so you guys can get relaxed and get moving forward. Um, we will have on Monday a question and answer session during the Tech Talks where we'll be there and try and answer all your questions. So without further ado, I'm going to switch off the webcam as usual and then we're going to jump down into the presentations. Enjoy the session guys. Let's just make sure I've got the right screen going. Uh, there we go. And let's fire away. Quickly switch up my webcam, yeah. Great, so. So as you know, the communication went out today and it was all about specifically, we were talking specifically about the essential services. So, and uh, so a government get, uh, gazette regulations came out and we are fully aware of the amount of uh false and miscommunications out there and iops uh, and prob stance is clear and that we will not communicate other than what is verified from a, a, a credible source whatever's flying on the uh, the whatsapp groups or around on whatever it is and if you want an opinion from prob officer we will not give an opinion until we have verified from a credible source about the information so as i've advocated on numerous occasions guys do not listen to you know listen to the chatter take it in but don't put your whole heart into it until such time as it's verified from prob and if you want to drop us a line and ask if this is validated or not please what's more important is that prob's stance is in line with these regulations because they're government regulations they're clear they are set out in respect to the essential services and at any point in time, let's be clear, that the minister can change these regulations. And if so, we'll be on top of it and we will communicate it accordingly. But the point here is, again, guys, is that it's the gazetted regulations and we follow the regulations. So the minister, as I said, of corporate governance and traditional affairs, I don't know why it's sitting there, but let's just leave it. In section three of the Disaster Management Act, in section three of the act says that she has the right to to add regulations to, uh, in this case, she has the right to, in consultation with the cabinet minister, uh, make uh, made the gazetted regulations to the uh, to deal with the spread of the corona uh, virus. And in this case, there is the act right on the government uh, gazette uh, on the government's official channels, and there are the regulations that talk about the amendments, if you want for a better word, to the act that talks about the COVID spread. So again, we are following the government regulations. So despite the necessity, the government regulations and measures will undoubtedly place pressure on each of us in the business. We are clear about that, guys. We know that and, and uh, we're sitting there and say, what is going to happen? But there's a bigger picture at play, guys, and this is it. It's all about flattening the score. Curve. Now, I'm not going to go into the uh, into any depth about this. I'm sure you've had enough uh, information about the specific things. So, without further, without not wasting any further time in, on this specific graph or whatever it is, but the key is the, the the measures are put in place to lock us down so we can get this curve of uh, the number of people that are infected, so our healthcare can uh, can uh, carry the load that is coming forward. So, the following are extracts from the regulations, guys, and I'm going to repeat it. It is the extracts from the, the gazetted regulations. If you wish to refer, you must refer to the full regulations, which I pointed out here. There's the full regulations. What we did, guys, is 
that we've extracted only the pertinent ones that we felt that was to get that information across. So let's go in. They have a definition and it's important to understand the definitions because throughout the document they talk about specific things. So instantial services means the services as defined in section 217 of the Labor Relations Act and designated in terms of section 71A of the Labor Relations Act, blah, blah, and listed, which is the more important thing there, is in paragraph B of uh, a paragraph D of annexure B within those within the regulations I'm talking about. So I'm just going to quickly jump down to annexure B categories of essential goods and services during lockdown regulations. So I'm going to agreed. Category of essential goods and services during the lockdown regulation 11A. Services, categories of essential services will be conformed confined to the following services. Now they list all of them guys, but I didn't pull them all out because I only looked for the relevant ones. Electricity, water, gas fuel production, supply and maintenance. Further, cleaning, sanitation, sewerage, waste. 24, production, manufacturing, supply, logistics, support, maintenance, critical and repair in relation to the re rendering of essential services. We'll get to that a little bit later again, but yeah, in essence, it's saying that to support this, the, the, the um, essential services, we need some sort of uh, support process. In other words, our merchants and suppliers. And then of course, transport services for persons, rending essential services and goods and transportation of patients. We'll get again a little bit later. So further definitions, head of an institute means the accounting, so it means you as a boss. You, an institute is any public or private institute that engages or in the supply of distribution of essential goods or services in the AKA, you as a plumbing business, and the head of that institute is, in this case, the CEO or in the case of a private institute or the owner or whoever, it, not, not whoever's in charge, it's um, senior in charge, chief executive officer or a private of a private institute. If it's bigger, uh, the, the, that delegation, that function can be delegated. So if you have a massive uh, plumbing company, that function and or, or, or a supply chain, that function can be delegated downwards to the appropriate people. And the reason why this is important, we're going to delve on, which is the most important, guys, what you're looking for is this permit. Uh, we're going to get into that a little bit later because it becomes this head of institution and the institution becomes relevant to this permit when we get to that point. So let's quickly look at the, let's go a little bit more deeper into the regulations. Restrictions of movements of persons and goods. For the period of lockdown, every person is confined to his or her place unless, stri unless strictly for the purpose of performing an essential services. There we go. All businesses and other entities shall cease operations during the lock lockdown. Say for any business or entity involved in the manufacturing supply provision of essential goods or services. Right, there we go. Retail shops and uh, for those, uh, the shops and uh, the supply chain to us, uh, retail shops and shopping malls must be closed except where essential goods are sold and on no condition that the person in control of the store must place in controls to ensure that the consumer keep a distance of at least one square meter for each other and that all directions in respect of the hygiene conditions and exposing of persons to COVID-19 are adhered to. Now we know that uh, some of the retail stores are coming online uh, and they put their own checks and balances in place, but this is the regulation guys. I know they're going over and beyond that, which is great and it's good, but this is what the regulation states. Right, the head of the institute, remember I spoke earlier on the head of the institute, the CEO, the owner, whoever, it, must determine the essential services to be informed by he or hers institutions and must determine the essential staff who will perform these services. So it's basically putting the responsibility on the CEO or the owner of the business saying, these are the services that I deem is essential. So in the case of construction, sorry guys, and in um, uh, the built environment with respect to plumbing, Guys, unfortunately, that is not an essential service with respect to plumbing. It's uh, the, the the services and the maintenance and the emergency services with respect to plumbing. So sorry about that, guys. Um, so don't make a call that you think that you are a plumber and you're an essential service, but you work in construction. You, as the CEO or the owner, need to determine that specific um, 
uh, what, uh, what you deemed an essential services. And, and don't get me wrong, you'll see later, you'll be held accountable if you go beyond that. So persons performing essential services as determined in sub-regulation two, that was the one above. We, we go look, there we go. Head of students performed in a student student institution, right, uh, must duly designate in writing by the head of the institute on a form that corresponds subsequently with form one and HSE. We'll talk about that. That's that form. Yeah, we'll talk about it a little bit later because again, that's the permit that we are looking for. All places or premises provided in Annex D, you guys can go read that. It's not really that important with regards to essential services. Must be closed to the public except to those persons rendering security maintenance services at those places or premises. In other words, what it's saying there is that if you've got a big manufacturing environment, that manufacturing environment must close down. However, only, and, and it's defined in that, um, and the persons rendering the security and maintenance service, those places can be stayed on. All persons will be deemed e essential services. All persons performing essentials, obtaining essential goods or seeking medical must be subject to screening of a COVID-19 by an enforcement officer. May be subjected, sorry, may be subjected to screening of a COVID-19 uh, by an enforcement officer. So if they stop you, they may, may do that and subject you to that. So let's talk quickly talk about uh, transportation because that's another thing we need to get around. So there, there it is. All, all services, including passenger rail, et cetera, are suspended, barring, let's go, private motor vehicles for the purposes of rendering essential uh, essential services. But take more importantly, guys, it's the it's the the part that leads on there, provided that such vehicle carries no more than 50% of the license capacity of all in all directions in respect of hiring conditions and limit to the exposure to COVID-19. Then where a person is rendering essential services, unable to travel. In other words, if your people are unable to travel because there is no public service for that specific thing, you may, may make arrangements, but again, that 50% of the license capacity of the vehicle cannot be ex uh, exceeded and the limited, uh, limit of the exposures to persons of COVID-19 are adhered to. So just a couple of other things guys take note of. Loss or damage in the regulations they've added. No person is entitled to compensation for any loss or damage arising out of any bona fide action or omission by an enforcement officer under these regulations. I'm just putting in guys, I'm not going to unpack that. There it is, you read it. Take it for what you want. Offences and penalties for the purpose of this ch uh, chapter, any person who convenes regulation 11B1 and 11.4, you can go and see what it is. We in here, that means is if you choose that you, um, uh, if you're not in essential services, etc., etc., shall be guilty of an offence and a conviction liable to be a fine or imprisonment for a period not exceeding six months or both, or both such fine and imprisonment. So there guys, just read it. So let's let's talk about the annexure or, or the permit that everybody's uh, talking about. So what we did is guys, in the regulations are clear. There's an annexure C that outlines of how the permit must look, right? And we at uh, PRRB and OPSA, we have uh, put together a, a document which you can download um, and simply just a Word document, extract it out and put it on your letterheads and edit it. Feel guys, feel free to edit to what it is, but I would suggest you stick it as close as possible to what Annex C is so you don't confuse anybody out there. So yeah, just quickly, just to have a look, I just gave you a quick extract of it. So let's just quickly work through it. Um, you simply just copy this and put it on your letterhead. Just remove that up at the top there, it's just for your own benefits. This first part, guys, please, must be filled out by that person um, who is the, uh, head of the institution, in other words, the owner and the CEO. He has the physical address of the institute, right? And hereby certifies that ABC, full names, identity number, registration number, Metro forms part of the plumbing, uh, the plumbing institution, institute defined above. So in other words, defined in your institute and is duly de designated in performing essential plumbing services as determined in sub-regulation two uh, of the regulations and in the function of the essential plumbing and the head of the institute signs that, stamp the guys, and then you give it to all your employees who need the specific thing. We have added additional things. So let's just quick, I'll come back to that guy. The permit should be clearly appeared on a business letterhead. 
the head of the institute as defined in the gazette regulations must sign the document so they can hang you if you you know you put something on and you try to be clever and they might be able to you know they can say well no 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 you're not in a sense you sign the thing the person to whom the permit is issued must at all times carry a form of identification to be presented with the permit. If no identification, they'll just turn them around and send them back. So guys, carry that identification. And that identification can be your ID, your driver's license, um, the PRRB registration card, a, a, um, a Metro plumbing registration card, number, whatever it is. We have made place, we have, we have changed this slightly. So you can put your numbers on here if you do have them. The Institute of Plumbing, a membership number, and down at the bottom it says, you, it clearly points out where the, 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 the officer that is looking at can contact us to verify the, um, uh, the person that is there. So we just try to throw up as much as we can. Yeah, guys, yeah, just to have a look if you want the website. Or where to grow it, but just go and look at IOPS's website, look at the COVID page, and or join any of the PRRB and social fees, and you'll get those downloads there. So please, guys, go and do it. Go and find that information, download it. And I say, guys, use it as you wish. Don't use it. It's up to you guys. But I would suggest you just make sure that you follow the format as much as possible as defined in Annex C. Okay, so let's, uh, there, so now, of course, what's going to happen? We're going to get opportunistics. There's a challenge of possible individuals using the excuse of being an essential service provider to break the lockdown provisions, of course. Professional plovers have a moral and ethical responsibility, guys, to act in a good faith. This is what we've been working towards, guys. You guys have a moral and ethical responsibility uh, at all times uh, to strictly adhere to the rules and regulations of the lockdown. Remember the curve, guys? Having a word on your plumbing uh, vehicle, having a word on your vehicle such as plumbers, as we heard on the Twitter, uh, the Twitter feeds, does not proclaim you to be a plumber, and neither does it proclaim you to be an essential service provider. Not only is this totally irresponsible, guys, but prohibited by law in terms of the amended regulations. We do have a wish to stress, and this is very important, guys. That in no way is PRLB or OIOPS advocating that a person not registered with the PRLB or not having a membership with the OIOPS are prohibited from proclaiming that they are plumbers. I repeat that. We do not, we, we wish to stress that in no way IOPSA or PRLB are advocating that a person not registered with the PRLB or not having a membership with the OIOPS are prohibited from proclaiming they are plumbers. The decision still lies with the institute and the head of the institute. So you sign that document, guys. The difference is if you are registered with the PRLB or have a membership with IOPSA, it gives us the opportunity as a third party to validate your your your, your uh, validate your claim that you are essential service provider in the event that the verification is required. By, a, by somebody. If you're stopped, you can give it to them. If they don't believe you, you can point it out that you are PRRB registered in OPS and they can verify it with that body and we will follow it up with that specific thing. We, we, will, we will verify it. Support services. So guys, it's great to have us emergency vehicles on, but if they do not have a support services, i.e. the merchants and whatever it is, it's going to be pretty difficult for us to work out there. Now, let's be clear, guys. This is a support service, aka the um, the merchants. It's not the manufacturers. It's not the manufacturers. They are not allowed to be open. So PRRB are fully aware that plumbers carry out the essentials service. They need to obtain the relevant materials and provisions. Need to perform these services. The regulations are clear that production, manufacturing, supply, logistics, transport, critical maintenance, and repair in relation to rendering of the essential services, including components, equipment form part of the category of essential services, guys. So it is there, the supply chain is there. However, within reason, again, I go back to the regulation which I put up there, you need to put that essential space in your stores, you need to put up the necessary process. You as plumbers need to be proactive with regards to engaging when you're buying material. And then again, the retail stores, and selling of essential is prohibited from selling any other goods. In other words, if somebody walks in there and they want to buy a whole bathroom suite and whatever it is, that is prohibited. So the responsibility again lies on 
the institution and the head of that institution, very similar to the plumbers, to make that necessary call. However, merchant suppliers that have a clear and defined relationship with the PRRB and or membership of the officer will allow us to give them the additional support and third party verification in the event, in the event that verification is required that you are a valid essential service provider. So what we've done in the interim between IOPS and PRRB, we'll be gauging with we're trying to work out which supplies are available. It's a bit over the place, guys, but the best is just uh, phone up your local supply and establish it. We will try and establish it further and put up a communication who is available, what are their necessarily conditions behind that specific. So keep keep uh, in contact with uh, um, uh, with our communications, right? Uh, but whatever they do, guys, just make sure that they provide the necessary uh, uh, um, social contact or the distances related to that. And also, guys, um, if you're tuning in from a, a a merchant or whatever it is, the same permit applies. You can use it, guys. Some of the stuff is not relevant. Uh, ignore it, delete it, but I, I suggest you use the same format of that specific thing, uh, the, the same format to give to your employees you wish to come in. So at the time of writing this communication, we were string strong verified communications. As I said to you in the beginning, we wanted to verify it before anything. From that point of view, we were, and, and I remember guys, we were looking at the regulations and we were getting strong verifi verified communications that essential services are required to apply for the company's intellectual property uh, at the biz portal and obtain a certificate from the commission. It is noted that this is and has not been included as a part of the regulations as defined above. In other words, the regulations, are, it's not been written in that you have to register it, but it was, and again, it doesn't negate the fact that you have to, it just says, hey guys, um, uh, uh, maybe the, the regulation hasn't caught up with putting this in. In the meantime, guys, we know that it's extremely difficult to register on there. It's becoming, you know, the, the thing keeps crashing and whatever it is. So in the meantime, go forward with what's defined in the Act, but try and just regulate, uh, re register yourself on the specific biz portal just to get that certificate. Um, also, I'd just like to point out that um, that's, that is our recommendation or the way that we would indicate it because everybody's flooding, the thing keeps crashing, we can't wait for that and we need to move forward in a responsible manner. But again, it's up to you as an institute or the head of the institute to make that specific call, but we will back you up if you make the right call and you're in the right position to do that specific thing. Also very important to notice guys, I have been on the site myself, I had a look at it, one of the things is, is that you have to have your company registration number ready with you and hopefully it's up to date and valid. If you don't, you ain't going to get onto that specific thing because your company had to be registered with SIPC. Right, before both, so IOPS's offices will be closed, however, uh, all staffs have been remo uh, uh, working remotely and it's business as usual. Yes, we have, do we, we are having some challenges some, uh, with the phones. Please guys, uh, I know I must actually just remove that specific one. I just want to just check there. There is another communication. Just leave this one out because what is happening is that the, the phones that we have are bouncing. The problem is, is they're all calling the one phone. Our remote phones are not handling the bouncings. In other words, when you call one phone, it will bounce to another line and whatever it is because of the remote. Just visit the PRRB's website for the relevant individual cell number. So I do apologize for that specific one. And then we urge you all to join our Ops social media page. That's the quickest way to get the updates, etc. or um, any other further updates, just go to our Ops or PRRB's website for that. Guys, COCs, electronic COCs, paper-based COCs for obvious reasons are not going to be available because we can't get it through the supply chain, down to the supply chain through our delivery services, but electronic COCs are still valid. We are just putting some, uh, we are, we're just updating a bit of the communication of how to log your COCs and we'll be running most likely uh, another webinar for that. Guys, CPD, uh, it's time that uh, you catch up with some you know, CPD points, guys, or even better, enrich yourselves while you've got this opportunity of doing it. You know what? It sucks. I understand it, guys, but let's try and make the most of it. We will be putting on more CPD programs or more webinars so we can pass on information to you. We're going to try and make this uh, this 21 days as bearable as possible if we can. 
help you out wherever we can with information, with some uh, entertainment. I don't know about entertainment, but uh, uh, education from that point. And we're working hard at it. We're trying to get our our um, our presenters together. We're trying to get some more content quickly pulled together so you guys can log in at any particular. Well, uh, just watch out for the communications. Check on the the channels for that, guys. And then lastly, guys, I know this is a cliche. With great powers come great responsibility. As professional plumbers, we must continue playing our part in protecting the health and safety of our nation. But it's imperative that it, it is, is that in this time of our country's need, we must all work together in a responsible and proactive manner. I know it's easy said that, uh, easier said, guys, and uh, it's easier said than done, guys. Um, it's a tough time, but we need to work through it. And um, I wish you luck. Um, we're going to try and help you out as best we can. Uh, in the in the sense of providing information to you, but uh, guys, just be strong and be uh, plumber proud. Thank you very much, and speak to you soon.